okay uh, see today we are going to talk about uh, radars and control surfaces actually for uh, a surface shape essentially control surface is the radar you know okay see uh, as i said today we are go our topic is radar essentially radar as you know if i wanted to turn a ship okay the the the, ex, the force that I induce is by means of a control surface, which is which it turns out for a typical ship is a essentially radar. In fact, some people think that maneuvering is essentially radar design for ships. Now, as you know, radars are typically yellow file sections and they are normally symmetric yellow file because you would like to make sure that whether you turn port side or starboard side, you get the similar force. Before I go to the, the you know hydrodynamics and flow around radar surface, let me just talk little bit about the various kinds of radars that are available. You know, I brought some pictures for that. See, this is one radar type. We call this is a, this is what is called a simple radar. Now, if you look at that, what is happening here is that this basically there is a stock here. You know this rather rather post here that means that this particular design goes like that you know there is the support is like that of course this goes like but the radar is supported both end this is this is one of the older type where the axis was more or less at one end so it's not very balanced you know weight is more on this other side this is a radar post type then uh, a simple similar type slight modification instead of the post we have a butt here that is larger plate you know if you see this compared to this one this one has a smaller this post but this is also supported both sides a simple radar on the same topic this is the other kind which you call more balanced. Why balanced? Because see this axis is shifted somewhere here more forward. What has happened? We will see that afterwards. The force will act somewhere here through a center of pressure and obviously the stock moment that will come depends on the distance in the two. So, if you support it more like where the cent hydrodynamic center of pressure comes then it will be more balanced. So, this is called balanced rather. Then we have got here another type which is balanced rudder, but is a fixed part actually this is not if you see this this hatched part is a part of the hull fixed part. So, it is almost like as if you have got a fixed part followed by the movable part something like that if you look at the cross section here, but it is also balanced. Okay. Then we have here this is called balanced underhung deep horn here you know the hull goes like that it is underhung some part is hanging below, but you want to have some area this side. So, that the net center of pressure diff from the rudder stock is not much that is why this side is because if it was not this side straight that would have been unbalanced rudder. This was a this part is very deep. The next type was where this part was shallower, is what you call underhung but shallow horn. This, this is a horn, this is a shallower horn. Then the more modern types are the kind that I sh will show now, this spade rudder, what we call. Nowadays, most rudders they do not have the support this side, see, uh, or uh, even this hanging like that it is essentially supported from the top the entire thing is the stock is somewhere here is supported from the top. So, this is what is called a spade rudder. Okay. 
and a similar spare data this is actually one type of spare data and you have this this is the kind that we will discuss more is most common for nowadays transom stun spare data in the transom stun so the difference being this in this case this stun is cruiser stun but most ships nowadays are transom stun you know straight line here with a straight line part so this one is like that this is a most common type of radar that is used now okay having said that so these are various kinds that means what you pri uh, primarily see is three different type one was balanced means it was supported by both ends this end and this end the stock was here not balanced sorry this simple type the next type came that is something like a hanging that this uh, what we call this horn type that is the there was a horn here and this other was supported like that there is a deep horn here supported somewhere here and the most modern type is that hardly simply here and it is supported straight from here directly spade type so you know as far as support is concerned these are various types now as far as section is concerned we have all movable ladder moving the entire thing you can have a fixed part and a part that moves that is a fixed part followed by a mobile part and you can have also this flap rudder where this and the flap both can move means the rudder can take a shape like that so, with an angle. In other words, if you if I want to look at that, this will look something like this, this. This will look something like this, this, and this is some a straight line. Means that one thing is I, what I wanted to say is that one is the entire thing moves, one is this part is fixed, this moves. Other thing is both of them move the flap like that. That is this also move and another flap there. See the reason for these of course various types they are more complicated type is sim simply you know if you look at a control surface asymmetric you actually have something like that and you have what is called a camber curvature. Now the lift that comes has normally two effects one is angle of attack what we call alpha and one is because of camber. In other words you see in aircraft you always have this camber why because you are primarily looking at lift only one side you are not looking at both sides but here we want to have look at both sides. Now this three different rudder way it is suppose I have straight one rudder so I can only make the angle like that about this point means with an alpha. So, the, the lift comes only because of angle of attack. The fixed rudder if I have kept it fixed on angle it here you know, it, it has an effective camber type because this full thing is almost like you can approximate this by something like camber and if you have a flap type both uh, this thing. So, it has got both camber and angle of attack factors. What I am trying to say you know essentially these modifications are so as to get extra lift that is all okay, additional lift, but most radars are of course simple type because these are more complex and they are used not for ships radar large radar they are used more for control surfaces in you know in submarines torpedoes and you know such such bodies which requires very high maneuvering. Having said this let me now just plot the geometry of a rudder. A typical geometry of a rudder is important to kind of understand that. So, that will take little time. So, we have let us say hull surface here because we need to have this definition various oh, these are all mostly done this paid rudder.
typical radar will have some kind of a cross section like that. This and then if I look at this outside cross section will look there is maybe the axis of rotation here. So, this is bit too far if I take some kind of a central line here. If I were to draw here, let me just draw it, then I will tell you what. It's tapered down normally here. Okay, then there is a one fourth chord line. Let me draw this in pain. Now, let us draw these things here. Let me just draw it, then I will tell you this. See what I draw, do is like this. Essentially, I tell you, if you take a radar, okay, this black line, typically the radar, any measurement this side, you call chord, right? So this is. Let me actually put one another one here. Let me put this as. Okay, let me let let's go go through it slowly. See this outline 
is my rudder measurements along this say x axis if I call it is what is called chord. Now, if you take at the so the top one is the root section this is the tip section. So, this one is a cross section for the root section here as you see from the top. If you measure now if you if this is a bit tapered right. So, if I take an average mean okay, let me the tell the other way around the this length here of the root section is what we will call C r chord at root section. This of course, you will call chord at tip section and the geometric average is geometric mean chord. Similarly, this side we did not say that this side both because since normally this is a flat the reason see the reason I will tell you another reason why this is flat here this is like this. Normally, what happen that you your objective is to get as much lift as possible. Now, for that you want to increase the rudder area as much as possible. So, if you actually the hull line is like that and if you make it straight line you will lose lot of area there is no point of losing lot of area besides there can be a flow separation and all that. So, you want to make it as parallel to the hull line and hull line normally goes up. So, you make it parallel here, but this one on the other hand you want to go close to the bottom. So, that it you know you get the maximum benefit. So, it is also a plane line. So, there is a normally a this is a plane line this uh, slightly uh, tapered if you take the mean of that and take this height this is my what is called mean span. So, this direction is the span. So, always remember this is chord this is span ok root section tip, sec, uh, tip section thickness typically that it is thicker here and thinner here. So, this is the that is also why it is so for such spade rudder is because remember rudder stock is coming here and when the force comes you have a bending moment. So, the bending moment is high on this point. So, you would like to have because the force is see this is a plate here and force is coming here supported here. See the plate is being supported here from one side there is a stock here only it is supporting here and if your force comes here obviously bending moment will come here. So, that is why normally you will have always the thickness is more thick here you know this is how the design goes ok. Now, in order to geometrically understand this uh, uh, you know the taper what normally done is this this side I should write there is called sweep angle. you have to have a measure of the taper how much it is tapering. So, this is normally done by taking quarter chord line that means, if you take a point here which is one fourth of the C here another one one fourth of the C here and draw a line there the inclination of that with respect to the vertical. One has to understand that these are only a st certain standard all you need is some measure of how much it is tapered. Now, this taper and this taper is not usually same. So, there is an mean line taper. So, instead of taking mean normally it is taken as quarter chord that means, from here take a point C r by 4 here a point C t by 4 draw this line that angle is called mean sweep angle ok. So, this is a kind of a uh, you know cross section etcetera for a rudder. Now, we will now look at the uh, you know like lift and drag and such things. So, for that we need to know this ok. To first of all, so this this picture is clear right. So, the reason of drawing this is because we will see afterwards that ultimately what I need is a lift force coming on that lift and drag because the control surface means lift and drag the net force that comes on a control surface is always lift and drag you know propeller surface also we have said rather is the same thing. All the forces are because of this lift and drag just like for propeller the way the propeller forces we are getting the, the reason the aircraft flies or same reason. So, there would be later on there will be some empirical formula and the empirical formula will of course, depend on the cross section shape and certain geometric parameter that is why these parameters are necessary because the formula will be evolved based on such geometric characterization means in terms of span 
mean span, mean cot, sweep angle, etc., etc. That is why these terms becomes essential for us to understand. Now let's look at the lift and drag part. Now for before that, we need to have this two kind of diagrams. You know. Uh, let us look at this ship part first. Suppose now this picture we should see. Say this is my ship here, and the rudder is here. Okay. This is a rudder angle. So, these angles are important for us to understand first before we proceed to that. W what we have drawn is, see this shape is turning, right. That means, it has got a path line. So, its velocity is this side, remember it must have a drift angle, we have talked about that when we are doing turning circle maneuver. Means, when it is turning, it has got, this is my x axis, it has got an beta r which is what is it beta r drift angle of the ship okay now not exactly same but if you look at this the radar also the, the velocity also here you would expect to be more, more or less parallel actually there may be slight difference but for the velocity at this the water this radar movement if you see will be along this line v at radar which means flow is coming this way to the radar you see here, this is my rudder. It is moving this in along this line when oriented this way. What is this angle alpha? Alpha is the angle to which the flow comes to it. I will draw that picture later on or rather if I draw this way, this is, this is where the V comes. This is my alpha. Angle of attack. Alpha is essentially angle of attack. Delta R is the rudder angle, the angle that by which you have turned. Now, this angle that is delta r minus alpha that is is the drift angle at rudder. Why this is important? I will tell you uh, in a minute. You see, remember one thing. What is the lift force? for a control plane, which direction is lift force? Up means what? Up can be any direction. Is normal to which direction? Is it normal to this x axis or normal to the velocity axis? Normal to the? Normal to velocity. Okay. Right. So, therefore, that is the, that's the point. So, therefore, if this is my v here, my lift is normal to the velocity, right. Okay. So, lift will be along this line, drag will be along the v, v axis. Now, rudder forces, when we say y force, which side is y force? It is normal to this axis. Remember, it is normal to the center line of the ship. So, what we have to do is to resolve all the forces in the proper direction. That is why I drew this diagram here. So, we need to uh, resolve the forces in proper direction. Now, we will we will come back to this diagram, but let me now draw this diagram of the uh, you know like uh, the radar section itself. So, the radar section will look like that. I will just draw a bigger one. 
So, that here the this is CP, let me call it CP. See, flow comes with an angle alpha, just like here that we are seeing. Flow is coming with an angle alpha to the rudder. This is the rudder, this blue line, and the flow is coming this way. So the flow comes at an angle of uh, angle alpha, that is the angle of attack. So and this is my let us say center of pressure, which means what is center of pressure? Oh, actually, I in the previous diagram also I should have mentioned here that ultimately, you know, what is happening? This entire force will act as well. If you take the net force, it will act as some resultant point. I am we are calling it this point center of pressure Cp. Okay, and this Cp will have uh, coordinates. This side I will call it Cpc, that is Cp of no, the basically x sub c p that is c p c bar that chord length of the c p and this we are calling it c p s bar that is span of the c p essentially that is a co it has a two coordinate no x and y if i call this x i call it y then x is basically span wise so why i mention that is that here supposing this this thing so my this distance is essentially c p c here my forces act which which direction the force act lift will act this direction normal to this drag will act let me just take it from here okay so the net force will act where This is a total resultant force. Again, this will have a component which is normal to the x axis of rudder and tangential to the x axis of rudder, F t I can call it, no, not F t here, F n means F s we can call it. Well, Fn is more. So, you can resolve, see the point is like this, you can resolve these forces in any direction that you want, okay. whichever way you are basically looking, you wanting you can resolve it. Once again, the flow comes this side, you, we always call this force as drift force, okay. this force as drag force. Right now, net force of course is lift and drag F T in some direction, and if you again resolve it, you can resolve it to F N and F this direction. But the point is that now this is one side. But if you look at this this diagram, you will find out that here what we have done. You see, if I look at this carefully, this was my V. So my lift force was normal to that. This was my lift force. Right, and this was my drag force. See along this line this drag force, but my what is my y force? My y force is going to be well this will have a result in this force, but my y force y rudder is actually force in this direction normal to this line and x rudder is going to be this one. You see what we are trying to do here. That means here, if I drew it, see there is now the ship axis here. If we look at that, ship axis is actually at an angle beta with respect to v. That means if this is v here, this line is so ship axis is actually along this line with with a beta r. So my y force is going to be here. That is y force is going to be this one and x force is going to be this one. 
once again let me tell you it is a question of resolving the forces you see this probably uh, let, let me draw it in another one we just draw it with respect to a line then it will be easier because I have this my ladder okay let us draw a various color flow comes this side so my lift force is here drag is here right which total this is my net total force ship axis is here so y direction is 90 degree to this that is my direction y so this resolve in this direction what is this angle this diagram should be kind of clear in your mind you know the reason is because I will tell you as far as control surface is concerned by itself you always look at lift and drag and you write them as you know C L C D etcetera half rho C L D U square etcetera right. So, these are written in terms of lift coefficient and drag coefficient. No, remember that you always plot C L versus angle of attack. Most control surface you would have seen this hundreds of time this kind of diagram C L versus angle of attack because for control surface by itself when you look at people only want to find out what is the lift and what is the drag uh, any NACA uh, or any control surface. But our interest here would be also to find out what is y d r that is y force because of the ladder and uh, your x force because of the ladder. So, I am looking at this y force here I am looking at the force which is the which ladder is producing normal to this this side okay, which is not same as normal to the velocity because of this beta that is why we are trying to make this resolution uh, uh, etcetera. So, now having done this you know the, the, this diagram see, so what is this angle this angle therefore is beta this is. So, we see I can straight forward get y in terms of l and d by taking beta because basically l and d are you know like further angle beta r beta or beta r if I call it gives you y see I have got l and d my y is beta r to l. So, therefore, all I have to do is to find out this way then then um, uh, the thing become very simple. So, I end up getting a relation like this you know that my y ladder that is given by y delta r into delta r that is what that is how I the definition of that if delta is a rudder angle y delta r is d y y d delta r and this is given by plus minus l cos beta r plus d plus minus because it can be both sides you can see that from here because this l is translated to beta r. So, in d of course uh, you know it will be always so l cos beta plus minus d um, uh, you know like sin beta uh, in this case plus both sides and n r n rather what is x r x r is basically the distance of this c g 
to the center of this pressure, this distance straight forward, which will be approximately L by 2, approximately L by 2. So, this is the uh, you know this is uh, the y and x this ladder and of course, sometimes you want to know the additional dra drag coming because of ladder. The cos this will be the x force of the ladder obviously, there is also an x force coming uh, you know like as you do this way there is a drag coming along this side. In fact, you will be surprised that uh, the drag because of large rudder angle is significantly large and it is used as a braking device for ships. And in fact, for submarines uh, during emergency rescue the most effective means to reduce speed is to actually put a rudder they call rudder hard over you know like maximum angle rudder it acts as a brake. You will of course, see that uh, planes also when they come down they actually put the aeronaut up as a kind of braking device. Okay. Now, this is about the radar forces that we need for maneuvering purpose. What about radar stock? When I want to design what also do I want to know? See I also want to know there is a radar stock here. right? I want to know how much of moment I have to give it on the rudder stock because after all I have a steering and uh, gear device because I have to turn it. So, I need to know how much of torque I have to give it. You see the force will come on the plate here and that plate is going to uh, give a torque on that or I have to give so much of torque because if I want to turn I have to give a torque like that. So, I have to de de uh, design the rudder uh, uh, steering gear compartment for that power. So, I also need to know what is the torque coming for turning it and what is also the bending moment coming on this point. Because here I have a force coming, so this is supported here this may break because the rudder stock should have enough str strength to withstand that stress. So, for that purpose you see here this will be given by net force f, f is the net force actually f is the normal uh, here uh, this is the I will tell let me tell you this f is this what is the diagram actually here f n we call it f n here this f force c here. see this picture f n is my normal force which of course, is calling here uh, it is written as f the same as I, I will just call write it as f n anyhow I will call it f n only. Now, this this is my stock where I have my radar this is my force normal to it. So, what is the moment coming obviously, f n into this distance right. So, here for I, what I get is this f n into d minus c p c bar when d of course, is the mean distance of leading edge to the rudder to the center line of the stock that is basically d is this distance mean distance of this this is d or, or rather let me write down. leading edge we, we we remember we always call this edge the leading edge right the forward edge this trailing edge you know this from propeller uh, 
C P C of course, we do not know. Now, bending moment Now, what is the bending moment is going to come here? If we, let us look at this. See here the, on this two diagram. So, on this CPC, I have a net force coming. Okay. What is the net force? Is Ft. What is see the net force is normal. Remember, net force is coming at this point normal to it. This force is how much? That is Ft. Remember, it is Ft because this way the force is coming. Okay. What is F t? It is L square plus G square square root. Right. So, therefore, what is the bending moment at this point? This force into this distance straight forward right. and this distance is C p s. So, I end up getting this as Okay. So, this is basically then what we have done is interestingly that all that you need is L and D. Okay. If you know L and D, then you can figure out almost all quantities of interest. So, now question is how do I represent L and D? Now, normally what, what you will do, we will do is that we always will represent L and D in terms of C L and C D. For example, this is our common thing no, that now let us put this non dimensional term then we will. Now, lift you define for lift a coefficient, we will talk about this how to get this, this thing later on. C L you define that as L by rho by 2 a r into u square, a r being the effective area of the a r you can call to be that span into you know like mean chord into mean span. Essentially the area rectangular that area plan form, plan form area you can call drag coefficient Let, let us first write this. Then we have all kind of thing normal force coefficient. See normal code coefficient is always like that because that we can see in terms of alpha this normal code this one is of course this angle is alpha. So, f n is L cos alpha and uh, d sin alpha right. I did not write it before, but it is very easy because f n is no normal this is L this is normal and this angle is angle of attack alpha. Because this is F
see here is moment. So, there is a this c is a note that this c will come here, because this moment here is half rho a square u into a distance some length coordinate will come here. Then two more thing I will do. is also defined they call it like that this is important from design point of view this You know, these are all the sort of coefficient. Now, I okay. So this is only a non-dimensionalization of the uh, parts. Okay. Now let's let's look at one 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 thing about this uh, uh, this part is y radar x radar part. You know this this diagram along with this beta r part. What is this beta r beta r alpha delta r? Just one second. Let me see this uh, this diagram of the ship. See here what happened. See, quite often you want to estimate this. Okay. One of our purpose is to basically be able to estimate y dr. Now, n dr is y r into x r, and x r is almost like L by 2. You will find out therefore in non dimensional form that n dr is y dr into L by 2. Into L by 2 will give you n dr right. So, if you get one of them you get the other one nicely. So, the the question therefore, is that how do I estimate y dr. Now, what is happening here see this beta r if you look at this beta r okay. beta r is a drift angle. Now, sometime quite often beta r actually how much do you think a ship ship normally drifts when it is turning. When you give about 30 degree of radar, the it may be drifting with only about 3, 4 degrees. Okay. Drifting, see when the, is the, the drift angle is this angle, you know that when the ship is turning like that, it is this angle, that is my beta r. Now, if you look at this diagram here, you will see that delta r is alpha plus beta r from this relation. Now, if beta r is small, then delta r and alpha become somewhat similar. Okay. So, what why I am saying this is because in such cases what is happening for a given radar here actually by this appro approximation you can get you can get a relation of y d r in terms of c d and c l and actually what happened if beta r was very small then y d r d r is approximately equal to l. Okay. Now, see suppose y dr, dr is approximately to L. Well, what is L? L is now you see uh, le let me get back to that. Now, what is happening? Y dr is approximately say L, but what is L? L is uh, what we just did L. Now, L is C L into half rho a r into u square, but normally you know you do not write C l. What you do that is alpha versus C l is plotted here actually what happened 
alpha approximately equal to delta r according to our if if you are making an approximation beta r is very small and alpha equal to this thing when beta r is actually 0 right when beta r is small you see here this is small then this angle angle of attack and dr becomes almost close by now that this is the point i was trying to make now you write y dr dr as this right but cl is not written as if you plot the cl graph it will look like that so some slope so cl is written as dcl by d alpha into alpha because normally it is a straight line initial part and you design it for the straight line part so you call cl as dcl by d alpha alpha okay now therefore if i look at that then what did i get y delta r delta r is approximately dcl by d alpha into alpha into half of rho ar into u square but alpha is delta r so therefore what would happen that you end up getting y delta r approximately in terms of function of dcl by d alpha so you know this is why i mentioned this is because you can make an uh, estimate of dcl by d alpha uh, sorry y delta r in terms of this in most control surfaces this what this is known as slope of the lift curve this dcl by d alpha dcl by d alpha will be known to you mostly okay this graph and what happen is that this dcl by d alpha turns out to be also there are empirical formulas for that several empirical formulas for that it is normally seen to be you know like uh, uh, like uh, uh, inverse of a aspect ratio aspect ratio being b y s etc etc okay so if i have an estimate for dc by dcl by d alpha then i can get y dr now we will be talking later on i think tomorrow's class about various formulas for getting cl and dcl by d alpha empirical formula for a given radar so when when i look back at all this part what do you find out here in all this that we have found all these forces that everything comes out in proportion to l and d l and d are written in terms of cl and cd cl and cd can be written in terms of dcl by d alpha into alpha for a given um, uh, 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 radar section therefore what happened when i have a radar section chosen say take any 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 radar like this so i have the cross section here so i will be knowing this well it will be based on some naka or some section so i go to the literature to find out what is my dcl by d alpha then i can find out cl then i can find out l and once i find l and d then i can find out all other quantities that is how much is y dr n dr as well as more importantly what is my moment torque coming on the radar moment coming on the radar the torque coming on this radar is important for me to design my steering gear that is that much of force i need to turn it and the bending moment here is important for me to make the size of the stock otherwise it will uh, you know break up so therefore what it turns out that for control surface hydrodynamics when we talk essentially it turns out to be nothing but lift and drag okay of course there are correction because of drift angle but as i mentioned many a times the drift angle is small typically for a small you know when you go only at a very large slow speed then drift angle will be large so therefore you can make a, a, a good estimates and that is what is done for preliminary design what would happen you would need to find out a net force coming on the radar force coming on the stock torque coming on the stock etc and you can make an estimate on that okay and also we will see that the the thumb rule of radar is that you pick a radar area if you if i took a cross section of a ship hull profile view radar area is approximately 2 percent of this area that is the rule of thumb see in all this CLCD uh, just last thing let me uh, just tell you you know it is a very simple rule you increase AR you have more CL L CL is constant let us say so therefore the thumb rule is very simple a ship is not behaving uh, well it is very sluggish the, the 
the thing that people do later on is simply increase rudder, just make rudder larger. Now, rudder larger also has another effect because when you add rudder larger at the end and if you do not turn it, then it acts as a skake and it increases C because it, it makes the stern dominate and it makes directionally stable like a skake like you are adding some part. So, this has two effects, it try to make the rudder uh, shape go on a straight line, also it gives larger turn of course, naturally you need larger uh, force because of that. But anyhow, so this is about this rudder, we will talk tomorrow uh, about uh, the various empirical formula and maybe work out one or two problem type thing of the rudder force uh, on a typical rudder. So, with that I will end today. Thank you.